Now, there is growing international reaction and concerns with the coup attempt in Sudan. The U.S. Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa, Jeffrey Feltman, said that he was deeply alarmed by the reports of a military takeover. Feltman had met with military and civilian leaders in Khartoum on Sunday in a bid to resolve the disputes. The European Union's Foreign Affairs Chief, Joseph Borrell, said he was following events in the Northeast African nation with the utmost concern. Now let's bring in um, our eyes correspondent, Mark Bichachi, who will report from Sudan to give us a clear perspective on neighboring Kenya. Now, Mark, talk to us. Bring us up to speed with the latest. Well, we, we must understand that the context of all this uh, comes across uh, during a time where there's a lot of tension that's been building up in Sudan. Let's remember that the military had organized for demonstrations uh, some time back to ensure that the people felt and they were trying to show that the people care for the military and wanted the military to take over. Of course, that demonstration was followed by other demonstrators who were pro-democracy, pro the transition and holding on to the path that was agreed after the ouster of the president. Now, the, the truth of the matter is the uh, military has been recorded and is on record having been afraid of, of um, the civilian takeover of the Sudanese government, which was about to happen in about a year's time. So this comes at a time where the military is clearly uh, quite jittery about a civilian takeover as was planned in the negotiations after the ouster of Bashir. Can you tell us more about these tensions that have been growing between this uh, transitionary government of the military and the civilian leaders over the last few weeks, even months? Yes, it has been growing, and the prime minister did talk about it. He did say uh, that there are those elements within uh, the, 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 the military and elements also within the civilian caucus uh, that wanted to uh, divide uh, the ruling council, that wanted to divide the country. He did warn about it. Uh, let's remember, he also survived uh, a coup attempt. He survived an attempt on his life. And this is just the culmination of the divisions, not not only that have rocked Sudan uh, uh, this year, but throughout its history, uh, Sudan has more, quite in a number of times uh, fallen into the trap of division and uh, having very many camps uh, within the common interest of the country. So this is both historical and, of course, a culmination of the events of the last uh, few weeks. And it's not just uh, the fact that the military is divided that is worrying. It's also that the uh, Freedom Council uh, of the civilian side is also quite divided as well, having one of their parties having launched a manifesto separate from the rest of the teams. All right, Mike, um, what about the international reaction to these incidences so far? Well, I think the international uh, uh, reaction is quite uh, measured, of course, uh, showing concern because we know the international community has been backing the transition. We know that um, as Sudan has made great strides in restoring uh, normal economic ties, normal uh, diplomatic ties with much of the world, uh, clearing up quite a lot of revenue streams that were needed. So there's obvious a lot of, obviously a lot of concern, especially since, you know, uh, Sudan neighbors uh, Ethiopia, which already is at war, and therefore uh, the Horn of Africa at large would be concerned about this, as uh, we all know, insecurity in the Horn of Africa tends to trickle down, gives an opportunity for terrorism and terror uh, groups uh, to regroup. So this is a concern for many countries and they're being very cautious because as you know, uh, information is slim and slow in coming out of uh, Sudan. All right, we will continue to monitor what is going on in Sudan and hope for the best. Thank you so much for your update on the crisis there.